What's going on guys? So everybody, I hope you're having a safe, healthy quarantine right now. But I wanted to talk about something happening here at the Brew Q studio. Um, studio is in my house right now until the shed's done. But uh, you'll see there's a very large box here next to me. And uh, if you saw here earlier in this clip, there uh, I sold the Grainfather Brewing System. And uh, the reason for doing that is um, I was just ready for higher um, grain bills, like ABV wise, make some bigger grain bills and make some higher ABV beers without having to do reiterated mashes. And I also wanted to go 240 volt brewing. So um, clearly the grandfather system is 120 and I was looking for a more rigorous boil and so I sold it. And I did a lot of research online looking at 240 volt systems and they all kind of range similar in pricing. So I went with what I thought would work best for me as far as footprint goes and capacity. And uh, let's take a look at uh, what's in this box right now. Okay, so let's open the box up and see what we got. A really heavy duty cable. And it's got the uh, three prong 240 for plugging into a controller. We have the heating element. I believe it's a 5500 watt heating element. It's the bag. We have a bag of miscellaneous items here. We got some tri clamp clamps and uh, various fittings here, quick connects, and plumber's tape. So basically this whole system comes to you in parts and you have to pretty much put it together. It's a plate chiller. Nice. You get your uh, water hose in, your water hose out. Your wort in, your wort out, and basically kind of like the counterflow chiller, the water passes through these different plates and the wort passes through the other plates, never making contact, but they do exchange heat and cool the wort down faster. And I've heard that uh, plate chillers actually do a more efficient job of cooling beer down uh, than, uh, or cooling wort down than actual uh, counterflows. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I've heard. And I'll let you know what I think once I actually use it. Had to use scissors. <laughs> I never try to dig too deep because you never know what you're cutting against. Let's see what we got in here. Okay. Looks like we have our pump. It's a little magnetic pump. And uh, it's a single phase induction motor capacitor run pump. And uh, not sure what brand it is, but it looks pretty heavy duty. <laughs> set this aside. Have a bazooka screen here. This is going to be for the kettle. This will help prevent a lot of the hops from making its way through into the pump. A little safeguard. And looks like we have our heating element collar connector, basically that connects the pot. And I'll probably do a video of putting all this together. It's a lot of parts, so it'll be a very interesting video to have to slap together. I think this looks a little more detailed than putting a grill together. All right, and this big box here is the uh, controller. And you guys will figure out who this brewery system's from. Uh, it wasn't gifted. I paid for it, just like anybody else. Hence the heavy amount of research. Let's see, oh man. So, lo and behold, if you haven't figured it out by now, or if you don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram, I bought, that's a heavy duty. A claw hammer supply 240 volt 20 gallon system. Nice waterproof controller. The heat sinks on the top. Three prong goes right here. 
and then it has a four prong plug which will be handy when uh with the uh, new 240 volt uh plug that i have in the shed and a temperature probe is in there with it heavy duty man look at the gauge this is my first time doing like extreme level, like high voltage electric brewing so this is kind of exciting <laughs> so we'll put this aside a lot of stuff in this box not sure what this is but it's, i think these are the uh hop spiders it comes with two hop spiders Yep, one hot spider, nice long hot spider. Looks like it actually will go to the full depths of the kettle. We'll see here in a second, won't we, when I get the kettle out. But that's one hot spider. And I know that this is the other one, so I'm not gonna open it. Wait for later. And the last box is massive, so here we go. Here we go. Now, beautiful man, I love brand new shiny stainless steel. Look at the lid, oh, it's like a shield, Jesus. They have a special spray piece that goes here, it's like a little quick connect piece here that goes under here and a little sprayer nozzle that goes under here. And that's actually where the work will recirculate and go through and spray on top of the grain. So we'll set the lid aside. Gave me all the tubing for connecting all the uh, connects. I have to cut the tubing myself from everything I've read online. Uh, no big deal. Who doesn't have scissors or a knife, right? Oh, look at this. Look at this green basket. Ginormous! <laughs> and I have a big head. So look at this. This is the grain basket. It's huge. <laughs> it's awesome. Now I have thought about like using a winch, like putting like a lift in the shed to lift this thing up, which I probably will have to do. Okay. Here's the exciting piece of it all. This is the actual kettle. Look how big this kettle is. Look how tall, look how me, and look at the kettle. <laughs> so here's the kettle. They put their logo on it, of course, like most companies do. Claw hammer supply, brew, ferment, distill. I'm only interested in the brewing aspect currently. But uh, look at that, huge kettle. Yes, I only plan to do five gallon batches in this. Um, and it is etched on the inside. <laughs> so when I do my brewing, it's actually gonna probably come up to about here uh, in this kettle. Now, people are like, why, why did you go with such a big system? Because eventually, if I want to, I can brew 10, you know? Which this is designed to brew 10 gallons. Um, but it's a 20 gallon vessel. Now, I did ask the guys at Clawhammer, and they said I can easily do a five gallon batch in this as well. So that was a big concern of mine, whether I could do five gallons with, this, with any issue or not. So they came back, they came back and said, it could be an issue. So we will see. And this is, this is uh, different than the grain father because it's a brew in a bag system. What that means is I'm actually going to mash in my grains at full pre-boil volume versus um, sparging and all that. So there, this is like pretty much like a no sparge process. Now, if I want, I could actually sparge this um, if I don't hit my pre-boil uh, numbers and I'll just sparge out the grains at that point in time. Um, there should be 
some little clips for this. And these are the clips, actually. These hang on the edge of the kettle so that I can, um, I'll demonstrate it real quick. Let's see, let me find the other ones. Okay, similar to the grandfather, uh, the bag is suspended and it drains and everything. Some people press their grains when they're, uh, they're squeezing the bag, if you will, to get as much work out as possible. You know, like sparge as well. So basically how this works is, uh, Take this basket out and you hang these clips in place, which is why it would probably be good to have like a pulley system for a system this size. You just hang them on and then your basket, your basket sits on this clips and it drains and you just let your stuff drain. So we will be testing this out here soon enough to see how this thing does with five gallons. Um, Looks like it will work, but we will see. I'm gonna run a cleaning phase on it and everything anyways here just to get it all nice and cleaned up uh, before my first brew. But there's a lot of assembly left ahead of me here. So. But anyways guys, this is what I uh, am excited about. This is what I have switched and upgraded to. Sold to Greenfather pretty fast. Um, uh, Tim, if you're watching this, hope you enjoy the Greenfather. Uh, it's been a great system for me. I've never had any issues with it. I only had to replace the reset switch under it once, and I've never had any wiring issues. I've never had anything like that with that grandfather. It's been a great system. Um, but I was ready to upgrade to something like this. And I did look at the grandfather's new system. It's like two grand, not for me. Uh, it's just a little bit, <clears throat> just a little too pricey. Also, what I like about this particular setup is everything's replaceable. Pump goes bad, replace the pump. Element goes bad, replace the element. Wiring goes bad, replace the wiring. Everything's replaceable on this system. And I don't have to reach out to the manufacturer or anything to fix it. The only thing I'd probably have to reach out to them about is their controller because it is their own proprietary controller. And so if things go all right with that thing, I'm gonna be contacting them to ask questions. So anyways guys, I'm excited to try this out. Uh, we've got a lot of video content coming, uh, mainly on the brew side, especially because I've got some new brew toys. Uh, got the uh, stasis cooling system that I need to demo. I am actually also modifying my brew bucket lids. Right now I'm waiting for a special grinding Dremel tool to come in so I can kind of clean up my grind, my, my drills. But uh, anyhow, um, Stay tuned and we'll see what I can do with this thing. Cheers.